So, uh, I thought we'd read from uh, Knowledge of the Absolute. Um, and what chapter is that? Uh, chapter seven. Chapter seven. Vamos a leer del capítulo siete. El conocimiento del absoluto. And I think we'll just read the first, that first verse. Vamos a leer el primer verso. Uh, if you want to do it, go ahead. I, I can't see. I'm blind. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have my glasses with me. <laughs> hey, that one's here. My asakta manapata yoga yanja my heart prana. That's one. Would you do the Sanskrit for us? Maybe you can see. Si se puede ver, porque aquí no hay luz por este lado. ¿Quieres el Sanskrit? Sí, sí. Sri Vagavan Vacha. Sri Vagavan Vacha. Maya. Maya. Asakta. Asakta. Mana. Mana. Parata. Parata. Yogan. Yogan. Yuyan. Yuyan. Mat. Mat. Atraya, Santa, 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 Thank you. Sí, la traducción por su divina gracia hace parte de la Swami Prabhupada. La suprema personalidad de Dios dijo: Ahora oye, yo, hijo de Krita, como mediante la práctica del yoga con plena conciencia de mí, con la mente apegada a mí, podrás conocerme por completo, libre de dudas. 
Oh. Can you read the English, please? Can you read it in English, this one? Sure. <laughs> the Supreme Personality, Personality of God had said, Now hear, O son of Kripa, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, with mind attached to me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. Jai. Uh, this is a nice verse here. Um, Lord Krishna personally is describing how we can know him. Es un verso bien lindo. Krishna está describiendo cómo podemos conocerle. And um, so he's saying, you know, to focus on him and to think of him. Está diciendo que hay que enfocar en él y pensar en él. And then we can know him. So, in life, we're focusing on so many different things. And if we have a job, we're focusing on our work. We're focusing on our families. We're focusing on our children and uh, pets, if we have pets. And then, yeah, because some people, they have pets, you know. <laughs> Do you have any pets that got one? No, that's true, that's true. I yeah. My brother is dying and he's thinking of his cat. Oh, is it a cat? Huh? Oh, he's thinking about taking care of his cats. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's yeah. Sí, sí. yeah, that's what's funny. Sí. And that's, I mean, it's, funny. it's the yeah. truth. Pero es la so we have extended uh, uh, families. We so have ex and, our, and our lives, there are so many extensions. So many things we're doing with other people. Hay tantas cosas que hacemos con otra gente. So when, where, where do we have time to just focus on Krishna? So, entonces, ¿cuándo tenemos tiempo para solamente enfocar en Krishna? You know, with all these other obligations. Con tantas obligaciones. And this being Kali Yuga. Where our bodies and our minds are, are weak compared to in the past yugas. Donde nuestros cuerpos y mentes son débiles en comparación a las otras yugas. So, where, uh, you know, what, what, what is our position as far as like thinking about Krishna all the time when we have so many distractions coming at us? Entonces, ¿qué es nuestra posición en términos de pensar en Krishna todo el tiempo cuando tenemos and then, if you you know you're working with uh, with other people and have a job. And you're working around other people that aren't interested in and in surrendering to God. Not only are people not interested in surrendering to God, uh, for the most part in today's society, but they take great pleasure in uh, harassing and trying to pull other people away from God. And, you know, uh, if they see someone that's trying to surrender to God and that's actually happy because they're associating with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they should be happy for that person. You know, they should see this person and say, oh, they're surrendering to Krishna, they're doing Krishna's service. They should be happy for that person. Yeah, 
because the person that's trying to surrender to Krishna is very dear to Krishna and um, he's, uh, he or she is uh, trying to sacrifice, you know, make sacrifices for God and associate with God personally. And so, uh, you know, a devotee looks at people, other devotees and people of other faiths or anybody that's trying to surrender to God and a devotee looks at them and uh, is happy for, is happy because Krishna is pleased with them and when Krishna is happy. Yeah, so, so a, a devotee, you know, is pleased when Krishna is pleased. Un devoto está contento cuando Krishna está contento. When God is pleased, a devotee is, is happy. Cuando Dios está contento, el devoto está contento. And that's, that's uh, important because uh, that's what the goal is, is to try to associate with Krishna uh, as much as we can, no matter what situation we're at in life. And so, even though there are so many distractions, okay, hay uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to become fixed in thinking about God. Es un gran para fijo en en Dios. Because, uh, sure, we could go up and into a cave and just meditate, sit and meditate all day and be uh, by ourselves and um, you know uh, there's so many yogis in India doing that but uh, for someone that's associating with uh, people that aren't interested in Krishna or other things in their life, you know, that just uh, makes it, it's an opportunity to become very fixed and surrender to Krishna because you have to, you have to uh, really focus your mind not to be distracted by so many other things. Pero la persona que enfoca en, en que asocia con gente que están enfocando en Krishna um, tiene una gran oportunidad so when you do when you do get time and you're by yourself and you want to pray and meditate and focus on Krishna more and more Entonces, sí tiene para y meditar, en Krishna más y más, that you'll have the ability to do that que really te, easily que la, la de muy because we've been, you've been practicing around so many distractions and so so then uh, when you when you have time to meditate by yourself or uh, do service to Krishna pray to Krishna then that's even more powerful and uh, but I noticed when I, when I was working that um, so many people would try and, uh, if I was happy, they would try and make me unhappy, you know, like them. Because, like they say, um, that um, people uh, birds of a feather flock together. Como dicen, pájaros del mismo plumaje viajan juntos. Yeah, so birds of a feather flock together. Everybody that's unhappy wants to 
be around people that are also unhappy. And so that's that's how they uh, associate. I mean, if you're around a group of people that's all unhappy, the last thing you want is for someone in the group to come in and be happy. <laughs> because devotees, when they're associating with Krishna, you know, you shine a light. You shine a light on people. Yeah, and they don't want that. They don't want to see themselves. But the fact is, the fact is that um, everybody has to surrender to Krishna either in this life or in lives after this one. There's no getting around it. No hay otra manera, no, para so you should think in your mind, okay, I have to surrender to Krishna, I have to use my life to please God. And that, that speaks for everybody. I mean, everybody has to eventually surrender everything to God. And that's a fact. That's, that's, their, that's our position, is we're part and parcel of God. And our position is to surrender everything to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to God Himself. So knowing that, knowing that there's no way around it that you do have to f surrender, then that, that should give us all um, the ability to understand that since we're going to have to do it either today, tomorrow, the next day, or the next lifetime, then it should become apparent to all of us that we should probably just take to the process and get it over with. And then, you know, that's that's a that's a the understanding that we should all have. And this process, you know, of surrendering to Krishna, as Sri Prabhupada describes, it's a joyful process. The more you surrender to Krishna, the more your soul awakens, the more you um, connect with Krishna, the more the happier you, you are. And so it all involves focusing on God. And that's completely. So that's um, that's the the beauty of this process is you know since we all know we're going to have to surrender to Krishna. It's like having a mountain in front of us and we're going to climb the mountain. In front, you see a big mountain in front of everybody. And then you know that you're going to have to climb this mountain. 
usted sabe que tiene que montar esta montaña. And you know it might not be easy. Y sabe que no va a ser fácil. And you might have to do, put in a little effort. Y pues tiene que poner un poco de fuerza. And there's many ways that you can think about it on how you want to get to the top of the mountain. And there's many paths that wind around. Some are easier paths. Hay muchos, um, senderos. Senderos. And some are just a little in the medium range. Y son difíciles, son mediano. A bhakti yoga is the direct route to God. Yoga es la ruta a Dios. So, in this world, you can you can pick whatever path you want to go to get to God. And some are easier and longer than others. Y son más fáciles, más que otros. And maybe if some of them you might just get a, a little advanced in spiritual knowledge. But the most direct path to the top is the steepest, the steepest, steepest path. The shortest one. The most difficult one. Is the fastest one. So then it's up to us as individual souls. To decide how long we're going to uh, to surrender. To how long? We all know that we all know the goal is to attain Krishna consciousness. And so um, we have to just decide how long it's going to take us to get to the top. Now, the steepest path is not the easiest path. It's not the easiest path, but it's the fastest path. No es lo más fácil, pero es lo más and sometimes I think, you know, I want to surrender to Krishna before someone, you know, hurts me or something or pulls me away or before before someone, you know, attacks me or whatever. I just... Yeah. A veces pienso, pues, quiero rendirse a Krishna antes de que algo pasa a mí, que alguien me ataca o algo así. You know, I mean... When I was um, when I was doing the the bus uh, service, the, working with people driving buses, yo era el del, uh, de las guaguas, um, I'd get attacked at least twice a week. <laughs> no, no joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at least twice a week. And you know that's with greyhound and. Uh, in America, and you know, you know, some of the rough people that are taken on those buses. So, you develop a, a desire to surrender to Krishna, but then you, you also want to protect yourself from, yeah. Of course, Krishna protects all, he protects his devotees. So I was never fearful, I was never afraid when gang members or whoever, you know, pulled a knife on me or whatever. 
cosas así. I was never afraid because I know God protected me. Y pues nunca tenía miedo, obviamente, porque yo sabía que Dios me iba a proteger. And one time, at uh, one time, a guy was smoking uh, outside of one of the stations. Una vez había una persona fumando afuera de la estación. And there are signs everywhere that says, don't do this, don't do that, don't smoke. So, but he did it anyway, of course. So I went up to him and I said, do you see all these signs that say no smoking? <laughs> and uh, he says, he says, uh, Make me stop smoking. <laughs> and this guy was like three times as big as I as I was, you know. <laughs> and so, um, so I said, uh, you know, I'll just go get security, uh, the security guard, and he'll make you. I'm not going to make you. <laughs> And then he said, well, he says, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you meet these kind of people. I still wasn't afraid because I t maybe I'm just stupid, but um, that's probably what it is. But, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I knew Krishna was protecting me. <laughs> I told him, I said, you know, I have an ink pen. <laughs> and, you know, because, because he was less intelligent, he didn't know what that meant. <laughs> but um, it scared him a little because he didn't know what I meant by that. <laughs> But a lot of times I use psychology on people, you know, to uh, to get them to behave themselves. I know I was distributing uh, books in the airport in Denver. And three, three big guys came up to me and said, I just gave you a donation, give it back to me. And um, anyway, they, they were just messing with me. They didn't really give a donation. Yeah, they were lying. So I said, no. I said, no, I'm not giving you anything. And then the, then the leader of the pack, he says, if you don't give us back our donation, he said, I'm going to take it out of your hide. <laughs> and I said, okay, just a minute, let me put these books down. <laughs> and then uh, he said, why? I said, do you value your eye? Oh, we, used to, we used to use that psychology line on them a lot. You know, I wasn't going to do anything to him, but if you tell him that you're going to pull his eyeball out of his, out of his head. <laughs> that usually stops him. So I, it was a psychological statement. But this just goes to show that no matter where you are, no matter who you're around, that, that there are people that don't 
want you to uh, become successful. Que hay gente que no quiere que se pone, que usted se pone exitoso. A devotee, for a devotee to be successful, that means he fully surrenders his mind, his body, and his words to God. Para un devoto ser exitoso, eso es para decir que se rinde completamente su mente, su cuerpo, y sus deseos a, a Krishna. And when you surrender your mind, your body, and words to God, y cuando tú rinde el mente, las palabras, then you are with God and you can see God. And so that's the goal that for all of us. And um, it's funny because sometimes you look around and you see all these people and Everybody has the ability to free themselves from this material world by surrendering to God. Everybody has the key to freedom for their soul. And God accepts everybody that surrenders to him. So it's funny that when people have the ability to free themselves and unlock their uh, conditional life, and get free from this uh, karmic cycle of birth and death and suffering. That I find it amazing that everybody has the key to surrender and they don't do it. And, and so, um, that's kind of a dilemma, a dilemma in this world. Eso es una en este mundo. And it's like, you, you know, we all know that we all are going to leave our bodies. Y todos que vamos a dejar <clears throat> we all know that that is, is not, just probably might not, it might happen, it's going to happen. <laughs> And time is short. Y el es corto. So um, we all know this, but yet this this material world is so um, it's so entangling to the soul. The world is just so entangling to every soul. And, you know, young people, they think they're going to live forever. They don't think they're going to leave their body. And there's a story about um, a man that he went uh, to get some water at a lake. And he went up to the lake, y al lago. and um, he looked, and there was a dead man laying by the shore. And so he didn't think, oh, the water could be poison. So, entonces, no pensó que, pues, ese agua debe ser veneno. <laughs> this world could be poison. And so anyway, uh, he, he went and he saw this dead person laying there, but he went and drank the water. And then he died. 
And then another man came up and saw two dead people laying by the water. And he didn't think that the water could be poisoned, so he drank the water. <laughs> and then he died. And that's that's the 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 really bizarre thing about the material energy is it gives you an illusion that you are not going to die. And really, I mean, we're not going to die. Our soul's eternal. But the body will die. Pero el cuerpo, sí, se va a morir. And the body is not us. Pero el cuerpo no es nosotros. So uh, the soul is eternal, and that's why we that's why we don't think we'll ever die, is because uh, we feel, uh, you know, eternal. El alma es eterno, y por eso pensamos que nunca vamos a morir, porque sí, el alma es eterno. And that's why we that's that's the reason we don't ever think we're gonna die because our soul never dies. But we have to focus on um, the time when we no longer are going to be using this uh, physical body to And we have to prepare for the time when we're going to fully surrender to God and see God and be with God. So we have to prepare ourselves for that final destination. And death of the body is not the end of, of the soul, it's the beginning of life. When we take the key that we have and surrender everything to God, then we begin our real life. And it's unimaginable for us until we've actually seen it. It's unimaginable the the love and the bliss and the knowledge and the eternal uh, eternality that we experience. No se puede ni imaginar ese amor y, uh, y uh, gozo que vamos a experimentar. So, yeah, so that's, that's when we really start to live. Eso es cuando realmente empezamos a vivir. Being in the material world, this is not this is not your life. This is a temporary situation to learn. Es una situación temporaria para aprender. It's a school es una escuela to learn to surrender to God. Para aprender cómo rendirse a Dios. And that's the only purpose for it. And so many other things will come into our life, of course. Y cosas se va a en vida, por There's so many obligations. So many, uh, so many jobs. As, uh, empleos. But uh, this is not where the soul is uh, supposed to be. Pero eso no es donde el alma se and Sri Prabhupada said, just do your business and get out. The world is, uh, the material world, is just like a sewer. It's distasteful and it smells. Tiene 
And um, so it's best to um, get on the path of self-realization. So the mejor es entonces ponerse en el, el sendero de, um, de eliminación. La and to pick your path that you want to go to, with to get to the top of the yes, mountain. El, el para al top de la because the more time we waste, the more dangers you know we can encounter. Lo más que, um, um, perdemos. Perdemos. Entonces, uh, lo, lo más toma en, en and nothing's guaranteed. Y nada está I mean, there are so many people that have diseases and cancers and and they have where they lose their minds Hay and So many problems that people encounter. Tantos problemas que la gente se enfrenta. And uh, so that's why it's better just to take to the path and just focus on that one thing. Por eso está, lo mejor es enfocar en esa única cosa. And when you're going up the path to Krishna, when you're trying to surrender to Krishna, then Krishna, he comes and helps you. And that's how kind God is. He wants us to, he wants us to succeed. God wants everybody to come back to him. He's, he's not sitting on the side like some uh, jealous person. Saying, I hope he doesn't succeed. I hope, you know, he's not going to make it. <laughs> This guy's going to drown. Let's make fun of him. But that's not God. That's not what God wants for us. God wants to give us everything. He wants to give him. He wants to give us himself. And he really wants everybody to uh, be happy. God knows that we're not going to be happy in this world. He knows about this world. So he, he, uh, he knows about the world and he wants, he wants everybody to, uh, to go back to him. So he gives us the Bhagavad Gita, his direct words to teach us how to succeed. And when we take up a path of, uh, of knowledge, of surrender, The goal is to succeed and to succeed as fast as possible. We won't die. The soul is eternal. And sometimes we, th you know, you think, oh, you know, if you surrender and then, you know, you. Uh, give everything to God that you're going to die. The soul doesn't die ever. <laughs> In that, that fear 
of going into an unknown situation is what keeps the soul from surrendering fully. Because if you don't know what you're going to find when you fully surrender, you might be a little fearful. Because we've been here so long, we've forgotten what it's, what our real home is. We've forgotten how wonderful it was in the spiritual world before we left. We've forgotten uh, our relationship with God. And isn't that sad? That we've forgotten how much that we used to love God. It seems to me that that's pretty sad. And just like if you had a family and, um, you know, and one of them developed Alzheimer's and they forgot the other one completely. And they used to love each other. They used to do things together. They used to be together. But one of them has forgotten. How do you think that makes the other person feel? You know, God's a person, just like we're persons, and um, when it's just like if, if your spouse, if your, if your husband or wife forgot you and they were still in the same house with you. Then it would be really painful Eso es bien for the person that loved you Para la que te amó. to look at you and they remember you, but you don't remember them. And that's uh, that's our situation. You know, God really wants us to surrender and to be happy and to to reestablish. Our loving relationship with Him. Because He loves us. And the soul loves God. So that's that's what makes um, God want everybody to surrender. And um, as we surrender, of course, you know, Krishna becomes a guru in our heart. All we have to do is start the process. And once you start the process, then um, God acts as your guru in your heart. He becomes your teacher. And guru is teachers. 
the guru is your teacher. Y el guru es tu maestro. And God, he knows how each person, uh, you know, what it takes for them to surrender to him. Y Dios sabe de cada persona lo que, lo que necesita para rendirse a él. And he will help us. Y se va a ayudar. So, um, that, uh, that thing is, when we surrender everything to God, the soul doesn't die, and the physical body doesn't die. You can have a physical body, you can control a physical body, and, and be self-realized. Yeah, when you surrender everything to Krishna, you're not going to lose anything. We're going to gain everything. We'll gain everything. Everything we've always wanted in our life, we can have. And then God gives us ultimate, ultimately Himself. And so that's that's the the purpose. Yes, it's a is um, taking up the process and um, accepting God's instructions when He helps us. It doesn't have to take forever. No tiene que tomar para siempre. And, you know, when we're going up the steep path towards God, you know, we might fall down a few times on the ground, scrape our knees. We might trip and fall. Podemos, uh, uh, respalar. Respalar. We might have so many distractions, you know, where we're too hungry. Too tired. That we, we have to just sit and rest for a minute. And it is exhausting to control your mind 24 hours a day. Especially when we start the process, it's very exhausting because the mind goes in so many different directions trying to pull us away because the ego doesn't want to surrender. But as we continue controlling the mind, chain the Hare Krishna mantra, Focusing and uh, using our life for God. Then it gets easier because the more we surrender to God, the more we love God. And if we love God, then we'll want to be with God. And we'll do anything to surrender to him. We'll, we'll take on any burden. And we'll take on any burden to serve God. Why? Because we're connecting with God and we're developing love for God. We're awakening our soul. We're starting to see what the spiritual world looks like. And 
and compared to once we start seeing what the spiritual world looks like and start loving, fully loving God. Then we see that the more we surrender, then the more love we get. The more we love God, the more God loves us. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came into this world to experience that love. This was God who came down specifically in this world and to bring the Hare Krishna mantra for one thing. And he also came down to experience himself, to experience love for God. And what symptoms did he uh, exhibit to all of his devotees? Sometimes he'd be thinking about his beloved to God and he would be stunned. Sometimes he would be crying. Sometimes he would uh, be shaking. And sometimes his joints, even his, his joints in his body separated. And sometimes he would just fall down and he would just be unconscious. And this is this is the kind of love that is available for all of us. It's the kind of love that we're, you know, Sri Prabhupada used to exhibit that, that kind of love. You know, he would just, you know, be stunned when he was thinking about Krishna sometimes and just stop. So he'd, ex he'd exhibit so many different symptoms of ecstatic devotional service. <clears throat> and by his example, his example, he's showing all of us what can be achieved. Sri Prabhupada was teaching all of us how to surrender to God. And he's such an example for everybody, for all gurus even. You know, he's Jagat Guru, the, the guru that all the gurus bow down to. So he said, Sri Prabhupada set the example. And that's all each and every one of us can do. Is surrender our hearts to God and set an example for people to, sh to see. Because we can't, we can't just fix people. You know, you can't fix the world. Sure, you know, I'd love to go out on Sankirtan. I'd love to be able to just, you know, touch everybody or something and, and 